Hello, and welcome to Talking with the DM. That's me. I'm the DM. Uh, welcome to our uh, our humble channel of players and creators. Um, today is going to be uh, talking about our campaigns that we do here on this channel, but possibly just answering any questions, just having a nice conversation. Um, it is a Sunday. Hopefully at this time, besides you know the superb owl uh going on right now or some call it the super bowl uh is going on right now if you're not if you're not into sports ball like i am maybe you're here maybe you're watching what's going on and you want to have a nice conversation with me i would love that and that's what we're going to do today so um yeah so as i said we're going to talk a little bit about the campaigns that we do here but if you are new to players and creators, uh, maybe maybe I should just explain a little bit about who we are. Now, I've I've talked about uh, like the concept of players and creators and and how it all came it came to be in uh, previous uh, previous chats. Um, but I would like to kind of, I I, the, I feel like the more I talk about it. Um, you know, the more I get it, more it gets out there, people know about it. So, uh, very quickly, uh, players and creators came about because I wanted to essentially not share the thing, not just share the things, the games that I'm passionate about, but I wanted to also try to help give uh, a platform to those who might not know how to get their particular passions out uh, um, out to people or maybe they I like I look at it and I say oh my god that is amazing people need to know about this but they don't think so um, so I try to basically have a platform where I could do those things I can share those things share people and ideas and games um, you know using what we're doing right now using using the streaming as a platform using the content that we do as a platform that kind of thing so that's in a nutshell if you want more detail i would probably say uh please uh you know check out the other talking with the dms uh the streams you can find them on our youtube page um they as they come out uh on our youtube page any stream actually that is no longer on vod here on twitch goes up onto our YouTube page so you can kind of catch up. Um, so, and you can, you can get a more, more detailed explanation about it. Um, but you know, that's, that's players and creators in a nutshell, uh, what I'd like to do with it. And, uh, I've only been streaming since October of last year. And this is, I mean, it's, it's been kind of a whirlwind. It's been going, it's been going pretty well. I've been having a lot of fun with it, um, but uh, still got a long way to go in my eyes anyway. And I'm glad that I'm able to kind of share that with all of you. Uh, it's like I said, it's, it's very interesting because I never actually believed that, Ooh, I'm getting bigger. Uh, <laughs> I never believed that people actually wanted to see the things that I was doing, uh, you know, the games that I was DMing, uh, games that I'm playing, and clearly I was wrong. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, today um, we're going to talk a little bit about kind of like the history of the campaigns, how some of the campaigns can, came, uh, campaigns came to be, uh, especially the new one that we're doing on Wednesdays. Um, and that's probably, yeah, that's probably another thing I should kind of try to clarify, I guess, is what kind of streamer am I? Uh, because, uh, some people, uh, in other various communities have, uh, I've heard them kind of call me like a variety streamer. Uh, and I, I don't, I, I don't know if I would actually call myself a variety streamer. Um, you know... For me, variety would be like outside of a theme, right? So my theme here 
uh, with with the games that I'm um, streaming and and the things that I'm doing is obviously all about gaming, right? And you can yeah, you can definitely you can make it more detailed than that. You could be either a video game streamer or tabletop streamer. Um, you know, some people uh, stream board games. You could be a board game streamer. You know, you could you could re you could refine that and define it further. Uh, but I think I think I mean I really honestly I'd be very honest. This is all still so new to me that uh, I've pretty much I haven't come up with an actual designation. I don't I don't think I am a variety streamer because. All of my streams have a common theme to them. So if you put the, that theme together, I guess you, you would probably say a gaming streamer, right? Um, it's very broad, uh, but everything I do so far fits within that. Um, I guess except this, right? Like the, the talking. Uh, but I do talk about gaming. Um, you know, not just, you know, other topics, you know, real world and real life topics. Uh, but I do talk about gaming here and here. So yeah, I, I think I think probably for, at least for now it could change. I think for now I'd probably call myself a gaming streamer because uh, I do a little bit of video games, I do a little bit of tabletop, uh, I do this, uh, you know, card games. Uh, even though it is a video game with Magic, uh, Magic: The Gathering Arena, uh, I have that going on. So you know, I, I, it could be a number of different things. But yeah, I, I probably would say gaming streamer would be, I guess, the best way to define what I what I do. Um, and again, I'm still I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to find my 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 niche as it were. Um, I like what I'm doing and and things are moving forward, but I'm always reassessing. I'm always trying to figure out new and different ways uh, to bring content to folks as well as offer them ways to, again, to uh, share what they're passionate about, what they like and what they do. Uh, so I, I'm never, I, I'm, I'm not a person who try who rests on their laurels. I hate that. So yeah, I always try to find new and different ways to do things. So it, you're as you watch if if you watch uh, players and create anything on players and creators and you know you start to see things kind of change and and, and you know that's because that's what I'm doing like I, I I'm not ha even though I I'm very happy with the way some of my streams look and the way they say I always want to streamline them I always want to make them look just a little bit better I want the the interaction between myself and you to to be better. Uh, so I'm still trying to learn. I'm still trying to figure those things out, and um, you know, I'm I'm having fun, especially at my age. I I love learning new things. Uh, you know, when they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, that is bullshit. Um, this old dog is learning a lot of new things. It's a little slower. Um, make no mistake, it's taking more time than when I was younger to learn things, but I'm still learning. So, um, and one of the other things uh, that I I, I I I thought about it last minute. Yeah, yeah, Mama Mama Shady, everyone. Uh, my one of you know not just ju not just one of my moderators, but my personal mod. That's my my beautiful lovely wife. Uh, yeah, because we are old and slow. Uh, I kind of yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, no, we still we're still learning um, new things every day, and that's everybody should strive to do that. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, Miss Hades Games? Nice to see you. Um, yeah, hashtag old dog new tricks who dis. Um, good, that's good to hear. Um, yeah, I. I mean, I think one of the things, I, and I did it last minute, uh, because that's kind of kind of one of the things that I do. I get a new idea, I, I want to run with it immediately. I think about it, but this one, this one kind of seemed like a no-brainer. Um, 
from now on, whenever those are talking with the DM, uh, a, a couple of days beforehand, again, I, I thought of it the other day, and I, like, was it yesterday? I, I feel like I did it last minute, so I do apologize. Uh, on our Facebook group and our Twitter, um, if you want to ask a question and get it uh, answered here on Talking With The DM, uh, you'll be able to do that. Um, so I will be doing a post every time uh, about three or four days before talking with the DM was going to be on. So it's going to, it's every other Sunday. So it'll probably be probably every other Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I will post something on our Facebook group, on our Twitter. And if you'd like to ask a question and get it answered here, uh, by all means, it also be helpful to do that in, in our discord as well. Um, if you can do that on, on any of those platforms, um, and the question is within reason, I will absolutely ask that question here, read that question, and answer it. Um, and we can probably have a nice conversation from there. Uh, but yeah, again, I'm, I'm trying to figure out new and different and interesting ways for us to kind of interact. You can, And obviously, you can always just join us here on the stream and in the chat and just ask questions. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is the, again, I just want to give those who may not have been, may not know anything about me or, or, uh, players and creators to just kind of get a little idea of what we're trying to do and what we're planning on doing that kind of thing. So that brings us to our topic actually, which is a chat about our campaigns. So, uh, I'll start off with, um, the uh our campaign that we do on thursday which is it's wild 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 mount and it is based in the uh, world the critical role world of exandria on the continent of wild mount and that group is basically friends and family right um and again anybody who watches the stream you you've already you already kind of know this but um so Mama Shady is one of our players, uh, in addition to being one of my mods. Uh, she, what is, uh, Lady Poopsie uh, is my oldest daughter. Um, Zero Saru is uh, my son-in-law. Uh, then we have my youngest daughter, Comet. She is also in the campaign. And then we have three very, very close friends of the family. I mean, at this point in time, I wouldn't even call them friends. They are as they are family. Um, you know, Lauren and Laurie and Tarias, and we had been playing. Uh, we had been playing games uh, going on almost two and a half years before starting this campaign. So uh, mostly D and D. And so that's how that campaign got started. That could, we got started essentially trying to figure out like i wanted to dm a game i wanted to run a dungeons and dragons game um to be very honest i wanted to play one and i couldn't find a game that fit within my actual work schedule my real my real world uh job so i was like all right well fine i guess i'll just kind of see if anybody's interested in playing so you know just it just like anything in life you don't know until you ask um, I just started asking around to see if, you know, my kids wanted to play, my wife wanted to play, friends wanted to play, and we kind of built this group together, and, you know, we've been playing ever since, and so that's been about three years now. Now, going on three years now. Um, but then we started streaming, we started streaming the actual D&D &D, uh, uh, game. And we kind of like it was great and again as i was saying before i didn't think anybody wanted to sit down and actually watch our game um you know obviously my players were having a good time but i didn't know if anybody else would have a good time not being actually a part of the game and just watching it so we started streaming i saw that people were absolutely interested in in what we were doing uh specifically and I started asking myself, um, and this was, wow, like I said, we started doing this in October and I started asking myself, uh, prior to October, like I had, I was trying to figure out who 
uh, or what I could actually run a game for. Like, what game could I run? Who could I run it for? That kind of thing. In addition to the game I was already running, because I wanted to see friends. Uh, you know, a lot of us were uh, in our, you know, we're in quarantine. I hadn't seen people in a long time. Hey, Grant Wilson. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Glad you made it. Um and uh i yeah i was just looking for a reason honestly just like a reason to get together with friends and after we started streaming and i saw that people were very interested in what we were doing as far as as the game was concerned and streaming i i, I that was when kind of like the light bulb clicked off clicked on not clicked off um and i said to myself all right you know what just like with my friends and my family i was like all right so let me kind of throw it out there and uh, I made a post in Facebook, uh, uh, on my personal Facebook, asking if anybody would be interested in me running a game, uh, you know, a D&D game or a tabletop game. Uh, it didn't specifically have to be D&D. Uh, and with the caveat that we could possibly stream it. And through that, I got a number, a good number of, of people who said, yeah, I'd, we'd love to do that. Let's talk. We wound up having like this huge kind of like uh, this, this really big discord meeting. We did it over the cor uh, course of a couple of days because not everybody can make it on the same day. Excuse me. And uh, through those meetings, Figured out, um, figured out what people wanted to do. Like, you know, I gave them some options of games. And, and again, the reality there was I just wanted to see my friends. I wanted to interact with my friends and not just be like, oh, yeah, let's talk every Monday. And then things happen and you don't get to talk every Monday. And then all of a sudden, you know, time goes by and you still haven't talked with them. So the best way in my mind was, hey, running a game, running, a, being part of a game is, is you make a commitment to that. And so I would be committed and likewise, my friends would be committed to see me on a, on a regular basis, which, which is great. Um, and, and also honestly, uh, that came, what came about from that was I had seen a lot of folks saying i miss larping i miss playing tabletop with people i'm you know being at a table with people i really want to play a game i really want to play a game and i could do that so why wouldn't i do that this this was all like the thought process that i had you know during this so we had the meetings, we figured out what games people would enjoy, what they wanted to play, what I was willing to, you know, to, to Game Master for, to Dungeon Master for. And over the course of a couple of months, uh, you know, we started talking about it. We, you know, and then going specifically into the Lost Mine of Fandelver campaign, um, I had my five players there. And we just, uh, again, over the course of a couple of months, you know, everybody rolled their their stats. Uh, we talked about you know logistics. We talked about how things are going to work. Um, we also discussed uh, backstories. We did session their session zero, and then two weeks ago uh, was the first uh, episode of our Lost Mind of Fandelver campaign. Um, and man, it's been a wild ride so far. And it's only, like I said, we've only been doing that for two weeks. Uh, so the folks in that campaign, uh, I've, I know specifically through the gaming community of LARP. Um, and again, for those who are unaware what LARPing is, uh, is live action role play. I had been doing that for many, many years. Um, and wow when i say many years I'm, I'm i'm going like almost 20 years of live action role play um it's a lot of years and, and you know what i'll just go i'll just go person by person and 
uh, and show the connection and why and again this is this is why community is so important because you make these connections right uh, so I guess I'll start with the person uh, on the stream that I've known the longest uh, and that's Matt Marjack that's Matt uh, he plays the smiling the ever smiling Goliath Bocek um, and Matt and I wow we we've known each other okay so I will say the best way to put this it would be um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good that's a good question Grant uh, Grant Grant Wills is asking how does he not have cramps because because throughout the whole throughout the whole game he just smiles he's got the big smile going almost never drops it and we all still don't know how like like his cheek muscles haven't cramped up and like given him like that that joker rictus right um but uh, yeah i don't know grant i really don't know uh but yeah matt and i have known each other larping wise we had known each other for good i want to say almost seven to eight years um based on the game that we had played together like that's where i met i had met him at a game uh, that he had been playing for a number of years before I was even there. And, uh, yeah, we, we just, we got to know each other through the game. We became friends and I hadn't actually spoken with him since I stopped playing that game. We were Facebook friends. Uh, every now and then we would say hello to each other. Um, but that's really, that's really kind of like, and that's again that's one of the things I, I was trying to fix was that i hadn't seen a lot of these really good friends of mine for some time and i wanted to change that so matt i've known for many years um hand talked with him was so happy he was one of the people uh that was interested in playing a game and and joining us in this uh, the second person that i've known the longest would be gino jane from conventional heroes uh, welcome. That that's Gene. Um, and Gene, I known I known almost as long uh, as Matt um, at the same game. Uh, you might be asking why I'm not mentioning the game. It's because I don't go to that game anymore. Um, if you if you had seen if you have seen um, any of the previous talking with the DMs, you you saw me. You heard me talking about. Uh, some drama at games at certain LARP games and things like that, which is why I don't LARP anymore. Not just because of COVID and the quarantine. Um, it's that I've kind of lost my taste for LARPing due to just a lot of bullshit. Um, unfortunately, this was one of the games. Now, I haven't been there for many years. Things have probably changed, uh, you know, like most things have, and things have probably may have gotten better. I just don't know. I just don't want to mention it and be, you know... Be, be called an asshole for something that I might may or may not say so I just won't mention it but uh, through this game I met a lot of amazing people uh, Matt and Gene are amongst those people um, and thankfully with Gene um, although I stopped going to that game I still frequented uh, a number of gaming conventions where Gene was always when Gene was there and so we would see each other in passing and we see and we still kind of through those through those conventions we would occasionally see each other and kind of maintain you know friendship you know that way um and then you know again always uh through facebook you know we would see how we were each other you know each of the other persons was doing uh but again there was like kind of like that 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 rift that kind of like divide of you know uh, haven't seen some people in a while and haven't talked to each other uh yeah absolutely yeah gene uh convention nerd since in utero um been going to the same conventions uh going to gaming conventions since he was in his mom's belly so in his blood um 
so yeah i mean and so that's how i knew gene that's how i knew matt yeah oh i'm, I'm so sorry i'm very sorry convention royalty i apologize sire um <laughs> um yeah no worries lady poopsie no worries um and so yeah so that's how i know matt that's how i know gene now julia i had never larped with uh however i met her through gene now when we were doing the uh player when we before players and creators we actually um uh, for those who don't know, I tried doing a podcast called Old Man and Skinny Guy. And we used to interview gamers and, and people in the gaming community. Um, trying Again, trying to give a platform to, to the things that they enjoy, things they like. And uh, Gene was one of those people. And the day that I interviewed Gene, that is where I met Julia. And, and immediately, like, I, there was like... I knew, I knew I liked her right away. Not just because I know Gene is an, an amazing uh, person and a good uh, a person who, who can... Oh my god, I can't say words tonight. Uh, a good judge of character. There we go. Um, but we just kind of like hit it off right away. Started talking about things. Um, and it was like... And, and she was Gene's, and I'm, I'm sure still is, biggest fan right just like it was great so uh the whole time that we were interviewing gene she's kind of like standing right there uh she didn't have a sign or maybe i don't remember if you did or something but i remember you just like standing there like we were at a concert and gene was the lead singer at this concert and you were just waiting to throw your panties at him right yeah yeah that's right you did you did because i was like i think she had a sign i don't remember but that was like the vibe i was getting i was like ah, i like i like her anyway um so that's how I met Julia. That's how I know Julia. And uh, yeah, and, and so those those so those are three folks. Then um, Doc, uh, I know Doc for I want to say maybe like I haven't known Doc very long. I've known him only maybe a year and a half, two years um, previously to this. Um, and the way we knew each other was uh i was one of the co-owners of a a, a live action role play game uh that was based in a sci-fi world and he was one of the uh he was one of the individuals who came to play the game uh him him and his wife and they are amazing people and uh like we really doc and i really kind of like after i had left the game uh, we really kind of very, very much drifted apart. We hadn't spoken to each other or seen each other in, in some time. Um, and when I put out the call for, uh, you know, who would like to play a game and he, and he answered, I was very happy because now I get, I can get to know a friend all over again. Right. And, and spend more time with them, which was great. Uh, and John, John Mayher, uh, uh, he's the person I will say he's the person that I know the least uh, of the group um, but he's still an awesome guy like I like I, like I always give people the benefit of the doubt um, but I actually met him and again this is where it's important like community is important you make all those connections is I actually met him through two other individuals who I knew that uh, they currently live in Virginia. Uh, John John lives in Virginia. And they used to come to the game that I played in New Jersey. And I knew them and they kind of helped facilitate this whole day where I actually, uh, myself and my best friend uh, who were doing Old Man and Skinny Guy, actually were able to sit down and actually do a whole bunch of interviews with gamers, uh, in not only in uh, in their the gaming capacity, like the games that they played or the games that they love, but what they actually did, other things that they did, other things that they were passionate about, other things that they brought to the table, and John was one of those individuals. Um, you know, John had uh, had uh, written uh, the books uh, Tale of, Tales of the Left Hand, 
uh, it does his own voice work, uh, is also a LARPer, is also a gamer, um, and again, one of those, one of those people that, like, uh, didn't know him, but sat down with him, started talking with him, and immediately, like, this is, this guy's awesome, I love this guy. Uh, so again, he was also one of those individuals that, that was like, yeah, I want to play a game, and so this is, like, a great opportunity to not only for us to get to know each other a little better but i feel like when you game there's so many things about especially tabletop gaming where you get to actually know people very you start to learn things about people very quickly and uh much much faster than you know like the normal like Hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? You want to go to a movie? You want to, you know, want to do something? Like, those things are very superficial. Uh, I, I hate to say it, like, but that's that's how I feel about it. It's like, because when you go do these things, you're still not being you. Um, you're, it's your representative meeting the other person's representative until you slowly start to get to know each other. And then you start to let your guard down a little bit. And then you get to know the real people, right? Um, when you're playing a tabletop game, um, you are, again, you kind of like, uh, you're, you're reaching into yourself and you're pulling out aspects of yourself to interact with the people around you, right? Um, and you start to learn how people are in and out of game very quickly and I, I i don't know for me it's like i get to see people's more true self through gaming than just the normal you know the society's normal way of actually getting to know people yes exactly yeah ex exactly exactly a lot of acquaintances and eventually a few good friends absolutely and you know this is that like that's that's just the way i kind of feel about it is you know this is the opportunity and and i told them all um you know yes we're gonna stream the game but if at any point for whatever reason some, one of you feels uncomfortable with the you know with, with the streaming aspect of it or the group as a whole decides that you don't want to stream anymore that's fine i'm still gonna run a game for you because that that for me again for you know, I want to make I want to make it a hundred percent clear running the game for my friends and running running the game for people who are a hundred percent invested in it and really want to have a good time and want to spend time with their friends that for me is the most important thing about the games that I run rather than the streaming aspect. Um, the streaming aspect is great because I get to share these things, but I want my friends to be comfortable. I want them to have a good time. And if streaming is, is not going to give them that, then I'll take that away, but we'll still game that, you know, I have said that I've said that not only to this group, I said it to other people as well. Uh, and a hundred percent mean it. Uh, but I am, I don't get me wrong. I am super happy that we actually do get to stream it because I get to share these amazing people with all of you. Um, it, it's again, like that, that, that's been my biggest thing, I guess. Um, since I started doing the podcast and then eventually coming into streaming was I have met such talented and amazing people through the LARPing community. And I always felt like everybody needs to meet these folks. Everybody needs to see the amazing things that these people can do. And it always bothered me <laughs> that I couldn't do that. Like I, or, or that there wasn't a way, an easier way to do that for them. Right? Like, you know, if, it, if, even if it was a, a, a matter of like, Hey, 
I know this guy who does a podcast, or I know this guy who does a stream, or I know this guy who, you know, he runs a TV show or something like that. Uh, let me give you his number. You should totally be on it. Even if it was something like that, I wish I could do that. I didn't have that ability because I don't know anybody who does that. Um, so uh, much like I try to tell other people consistently, if you can't find the thing that you want or the opportunity uh there are people who don't have that opportunity um available make those opportunities make those things right and that's actually like the biggest philosophy of a lot of game runners um is that they see games and they enjoy these games and they love these games but they don't find a game or they don't see they they, they haven't been able to find that game that they want to play so what do they do they create it and that's amazing um so uh you know before i get too before i get too far in i i, I tend to to miss some of what's going on in chat so i just want to very quickly let's see Again, as I said, I'm I'm very new to this. So, I think I got everybody to see. Um, yes, I did. I, I did. Uh, I, I did up my my uh, my sire game, and that, that you know, because Gene is convention royalty. Um, let's see. Okay, that's what I missed. Julia, thank you very much. I seemed super cool. Completely a facade. Uh, and I'm so glad I got to know you beyond just at one time and now I get to game with you. Yeah, abs same here. Same here. Um, yeah. Uh, I will say that um, I don't feel super cool. Right? I don't think of myself in those terms. Um, I have spoken with people who who think think of me in those terms or um, uh, or you know things like that. And I'm sure it's true, but I don't actually feel that way. Like I think I think what comes across the most, for some people. Thank you, Grant. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. I appreciate that. Um, I think what comes across the most is, and I think, and I believe this about most people, is that what you see here is what you get, right? Like, if you've met me in person, I'm still the same person. Right. This is this right here is not like, you know, this is not my streaming personality. And then you meet me and I'm a complete uh, I'm completely different. Right. This is who I am. In addition to that. I am very passionate about a lot of the things I discuss. And I think that always comes across uh, to whoever I speak to. And. I think that's what people, um, well, some people gravitate towards, is there's there's too too much hypocrisy, uh, too much lying, too much two facedness. I guess you know. I don't even know if that's a word. I just but I, I just said it. Um, but and when you meet someone who is genuine. When you meet someone who is like just upfront about the things they believe, the things that they love, and and not only that, just want to share those things with you, but not try to force you to like those things. Um, you know, I think a lot of people gravitate towards that. I think a lot of people see that as someone who's completely genuine and real and absolutely want to interact with. And so I'm I'm thankful that I am that. Um, but when you actually put the word cool, um, in that, in the description, uh, and then with me, 
I get a little, you know, because again, I don't, I don't, I don't think of myself in terms of cool. I've never, I've never thought of myself as cool. Um, but thank you, thank you, Julie. Yeah. Um, I, I thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I try, I try to be real, as much as as much as I possibly can. I try to be real. Um, but I think, like I said, I think that's the thing that that makes people gravitate towards other people is when you find people who are real you find people who are genuine they you really want to you want to be with those people because you're just tired of trying to read in between the lines you're trying you're tired of trying to figure people out um it doesn't mean that i'm not a complicated individual um i think genuine and real people all are complicated in, in individuals because that's just who people are um but I don't, I, I just, it's just so much easier, I think, to have a relationship with people when out of the, out of the gate, you know, oh, this is the type of person this is. Great. Let's move forward. And then you can actually have a real relationship with that person based on truth and reality. <laughs> so, um... But yeah, so I think, yeah, I think that's, I mean, in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of like where the, uh, the Lost Mind game, you know, came out of is, you know, all these really amazing people who have these amazing, uh, skills both in and out of game, um, you know, bringing those things to the table and having a damn good time with it. And I'm super, I'm super thrilled. I'm super stoked about it. I think it's so much fun. Uh, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, all those folks are amazing. And uh, uh, one of the things I heard uh, coming out of uh, coming out of the first two episodes, uh, for two for those two streams of Lost Minds was, oh my God, like their role play is so amazing. And you know, oh, I can't believe, you know, they're, they're so great. And, da, da, da. and I wanted to, I just wanted to touch on that because I love, I love both of my, my groups. Right. Uh, and I love them both for the same and different reasons. So the, the different reasons that I love both my groups. So my, my wild mount group, I love them because they genuinely want to play the game. They come to the game because they want to have a good time. And for them, it's not about like, I need to, you know, I need to come to the table and be the best, you know, D&D player ever. It's no, I'm coming to the table because this is fun. I get to see my friends and family. Uh, let's do this, right? And then we all have a good time together. You can't fake that. You know, that's, that's, that's for me, that's the important thing. Now, th that is also the same reason the other, my other group came to the table, right? However, with my Wild Mount group, uh, they don't have a lot of experience role-playing. And that's fine. And I love it because we get to show people who are watching the game, uh, who may be intimidated by some of the... D and D streams that they see, where people are doing accents and they're role playing and they're having, you know, they're, they're just just being like 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 amazing actors and improv, right? That comes with practice. That's that's a skill that you you acquire and you learn and you get better at. But you don't need it to play D and D to play any tabletop game. You don't need those. Um, I think it, it's been called uh, <laughs> it's been called the Matt Mercer effect um, uh, uh, across uh, a lot of the D and D uh, D and D tables, um, but it actually cuts both ways. Uh, the Matt Mercer effect for those who are unaware. So Matt Mercer is obviously the DM for Critical Role, very very popular, uh, becoming mainstream D and D uh, stream. And the Matt Mercer effect was that the DM would expect his players to come to the table and be as incredible as the as the players are in his game, 
but the other side of it is that the players that come to the table expect a dm to be matt mercer and so it cuts both ways and even matt mercer says no that absolutely no one should be expecting that and no one should so i love the fact that my wild map group very very specifically um shows everybody that you can come to a game come to the table not be actors not do role play not or, or, you know or do you know the do role play that they're comfortable with right and still have a good time and i love that about my i love that about them because i i told them i was like look i don't care if you don't want to role play and you just want to come to the to the table and just roll and and have a good time and play your character how you want to play i don't care as long as you have a good time and everybody you know together has a good time that's the important thing and so i get to show folks on stream that that's how that works that you can do that uh then on the other end of that i have my lost minds players where i can say hey are you a larper who hasn't been larping because of covid guess what let's put that into tabletop right and use those skills that you have acquired through through live action role playing um and just be ridiculous at the table and like smile for three and a half to four hours on you know during the whole game um or or just just put just exercise that that muscle right and and you can see the difference between two both of the games but there's both great games. They're both two sets of amazing players who just have different skill sets, but they both just want to have a good time and have fun. Um, so I am so glad that I get to actually show that to people. Like, I, again, this, this platform where I can actually show it. So I, I, I absolutely wanted to address that because just because you can improv and role play doesn't mean that you're a good D&D player. What makes you a good D&D player is, or, or any tabletop game for that matter, is that you're willing to come to the table, you're willing to have fun and have a good time, and you're also willing to make sure that the folks around you, at the you know who are playing with you, are also having a good time. Like, you know that it is your responsibility to not just make sure that you're having a good time, but make sure that everybody around you is having a good time as well. And that is oh, that is super clear with both my groups. So I love that. I love that about them. Uh, role play equals understanding your character's motivations and acting accordingly. Nobody needs to be an Emmy Oscar level actor uh, to play their characters. And yes, the DM makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, is it cool to do those things? Absolutely. Do you have to? No. And you can still have an amazing time and still have fun. Um, and yeah, uh, you're absolutely right, Julie. Like the DM makes the difference because the DM sets the tone for the group. Uh, if the DM is not, making sure that everyone knows the expectations at the table, then it's just going to be chaos. So I think, yeah, absolutely. I think it, it's, uh, it, it's a combination because also as Matt Colville has said, uh, even when you're the DM, guess what? You're a player at the table as well. So you should be having a good time too. Um, so you should absolutely keep those things in mind. And, and again, I'm, I'm super stoked that I get to do that for my, uh, uh, for my players. Yes, yes, I do listen to Matt Colville too. So yeah, I'm, look, I am a DM. Um, I've only been doing it for two and a half years, almost three, right? I still got a shit ton of things to learn. I don't know everything and I don't think I ever will know everything. Um, 
But again, for me, it's about making sure that everybody's having fun. And yes, there are rules to, to, to the game and rules to playing together. But I'm still, you know, I'm still going to keep learning as much as I can and take it, you know, keep going from there. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is a great, yeah, you're absolutely right. That is a good one. That is a good one. Um, yeah, he does, uh, Matt Colville does talk about role play uh, definitely more at length than I just did. Um, <laughs> talking about, you know, big R versus little R. Uh, big role play versus little role play. Um, and so, yeah, you should, yeah, there's, there are so many good resources out there. Uh, if you've ever decided, you know, thought about that, you know, becoming a dungeon master. Uh, but again, the, for me, uh, the biggest thing that kind of pushed me towards the edge of, of being a dungeon master was that I wanted to play a game and I wasn't finding that game. And again, as I said before, it also, you know, scheduling had a lot to do with it. Um, but I made my own game. And I was, and again, I was totally like, I had, I put it in my head that I would never play a game. I had to like come to that that conclusion that I'm never gonna be a player ever again, which is not gonna, not gonna be true. At some point, I'll be a player in someone's game. Uh, but for the most part, um, you know, as a dungeon master, I'm I'm still a player. I'm still having an amazing time with my players, and it's always fun. Like it's like, like I get ex I get excited every time I'm building like you know scenarios and mods for my players and like ooh this will be cool and oh my god this is gonna be so much fun if if, if X Y and Z happens and ooh you know I get so excited uh, yeah Grant yeah I play all of the NPCs right um, and yeah and and just like with uh, just like with the uh, the PCs of the game. Uh, depending on the type of NPC I'm running, I com I I make complete character sheets for them as if I was a player, um, and it just like it's it's so much fun, it's so much fun, and I finally get to exercise all of the the crazy people in my head that keep talking to me, uh, and they come out of my mouth now, so. <laughs> um no um but yeah it's it is super fun for me to play uh and do these things for my for for my players also i i get i get a kick out of it i, get, I really do um so yeah um yeah i would i would love i would love to go on uh, on your channel on unconventional heroes and, and 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 guest star you you let me know you let me know if you need something and if i can do it i'll do it um you know just let yeah let me know let me know i i'm 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 100 percent good with that that would be so much fun uh but uh but yeah so so that's that's i mean that's pretty much um as far as you know, the the Wildbound campaign and and the Lost Mine campaign, um, that's kind of how those campaigns came together. And you know, a question that some people have also that I've I've heard is you know, well, how do you get all these people to play? You ask. That's what I did. Like like I asked, right? Um, that's that's the that's the first part of it. Like. If you if you say to yourself, I want to run a game, and before you actually get to the part where you're asking people if they want to play, you've already said to yourself, uh, you know what, I'm not going to get any players, nobody's going to do this, it's too complicated, blah, blah. You've already killed your own game, right? So... Um, you know, many of you may have uh, heard me say previously, you know, on, on other streams uh, that, you know, what I do for a living, I, I organize for a living. Uh, that is a completely different 
conversation that I won't have right now is that that that's 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 a lot in itself. But one of the principles of that of over of any organizing is you won't you don't know the answer until you ask. Right? Uh, and many people do that. Many people will kind of self-sabotage themselves and say, oh, that won't work because of this, or that won't work because of that. If you don't try, you won't know. If you don't ask someone, you don't know. You really don't. Let someone tell you, I can't do it. You know, that's, that's what you really, again, you really have to do that um, in order to find out. Yeah, Grant, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you there, there are people out there that you would be surprised that they want to play a game with you, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons. Excuse me. Whether it's Dungeons and Dragons uh, or any other tabletop game, um, you know there there are people out there who either they're timid um, or they've never kind of voiced it to you or something like that because maybe they don't know. Um, you know that you 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 don't know what's going on in someone else's head until you ask them. Um, so. Yeah, if you are looking to run your own game and, and you just don't have any players, like, ask. You know, put that call out there like I did. You know, I literally just made a post in face in, on my personal Facebook and I said, who, is will who, would, who would be willing to play a game? I would run it and there's a possibility of us streaming it. That was it. That's all I did. And look at where we are today. So, I am absolutely a person that if I can do it <laughs> you can absolutely do it too like no no question All right um Grant Wilson that's nasty <laughs> that's nasty <laughs> Um, yeah, but no, if, if you want me to play your game and I have the ability to do so, I'm down. Oh, of course, of course, with Hobbs as the DM, of course, I am no longer shocked or surprised. <laughs> oh boy. Um, but yeah, I... I love that I have the ability to do this. Um, now, I will say, uh, let's see, Unconventional Heroes uh, last week did kind of like an interview thing. Uh, unfortunately, I missed it because they did an interview with their players uh, where people got to ask questions of the players uh, and the characters themselves, if I, if, if, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but I was unable to, to watch it live. Um, because, um, because I was actually, I was in a work meeting and then I was streaming later that evening for, uh, magic. Um, but that's something that I would love to do again. I would love to start interviewing people like here on, like my hope is that at some point with talking with the DM, that it literally is like an interview show at some points, right? It, Cause I'm not going to lie, I sometimes really get tired of hearing my own voice. You know, some of you might see me on my streams and go, oh, this guy loves the sound of his own voice. Do I don't. Um, ah, yeah, it was a Q&A of the characters themselves, okay. Um, no, no worries, Julian, no worries. Um, I, I am... Yeah, see, even mom is tired of, of hearing my voice. Uh, but, um, but I would love, like, I would love to, to make this 
you know, not a hundred percent of the time, but I would love to be able to, again, you know, be on here and actually have someone to talk about, you know, whether it's the game that they're playing or if it's like a stream that I'm doing and we just kind of discuss it together and answer questions from the chat. Um, like, I'd love to do that again. Um, uh, yeah, I like I, I, I don't get me wrong. I enjoy doing this. Um, but there's something there's something about like the dynamic of two individuals having a conversation that is more exciting than me just kind of answering chat. Right. I think I think a lot of a lot of things come out of that. Uh, a lot of topics come out of that and you can have a really good conversation go in ways that you never expected. Um. <laughs> oh, I'll take you up on that, Gene. I'll take you up on that. He volunteers his tribute. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And I don't, and again, I don't, um, and talking with the DM only happens every other Sunday. So we'll definitely have time to kind of pull, you know, pull something like that together. But, um, you know, it's like, look, like I said, I have a lot of ideas and dreams and wishes of what I'd like to, you know, I'd like to do with, with the stream and, and the content that I'm doing. Um, but it really comes down to, uh, it, it comes down to the support, right? It comes down to uh, the, am, am I actually giving somebody something that they're, that, that they're, that they're looking for, right? With the D&D streams, absolutely. We're, we're being entertaining. Uh, we're teaching people not just about uh, the game, but the interactions, how people interact with each other. Um, me personally, I, I've learned a lot just by watching D&D streams about people. I'm a, I'm a people watcher, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and as an organizer, that's actually some one of the things that I do on a you know, normal day day-to-day -day basis which is uh reading kind of like reading people reading body language and and you know things like that so it's always fascinating to me uh to learn things more things about people and stuff like that so you know i i'm hoping at least you know with the DD streams that people are enjoying it um the video game streams i just enjoy playing the video games uh not a lot of people come watch me play video games and that's fine uh, cause I actually feel less, uh, less worried about raging and shit <laughs> when I, when I, when I need to, um, but I enjoy it. So I was like, okay. And that's, and again, that's what my stream, that's what players and creators is about. It's like sharing the things that I love, sharing the things that I enjoy doing. Um, and I hope that through that people are getting something out of it. Um, you know, and again, whether even if it's just like something like this, like there, there are some folks uh, who have come onto this stream and have actually said to me the, uh, that they enjoy this, like they enjoy the interaction between myself and them on the chat, but they hate D and D streams because they're only talking to mods and the people in the chat and the the folks that are playing D and D aren't interacting with them as much as they like. That you know, some you know, stream, one stream is not the same as another, and there's not you know, not everybody's going to be happy. You know, if I remember correctly, I think I told that person, I was like, okay, great, then just keep joining us here, um, and I'll you know, we'll talk, because that's that's what I do on on this stream. But you know, some people have to understand, you're playing D and D, and you're trying to share that with folks, um. That's why you have mods. That's why you, you know you can't take away from from what's going on because then the game isn't real. Then then the, then you're actually now you're only playing the game not just for the enjoyment and entertainment of your players, but in my I'm sorry, in my estimation I feel like it's kind of pandering a little bit if you try to take away from your players during the game. Um again, that's that's my that's my that's what I believe. That's how I believe it. You know, if we weren't streaming, I would still be giving 100% to my players. And 
Um, the stream is just an added level. It's an added layer to that. So still need to give 100% to my players no matter what. So that's that's just how I feel about it. So again, I, I do a I'm trying to do a little bit of everything, you know, a little bit of content, you know, creation uh, to see, you know, if if D and D is not your thing, maybe magic is your thing because that's what I'm doing every Friday night now, you know, Friday night magic on Arena, um, Magic the Gathering, you know, boom cards, bitches, uh, <laughs> and and then and like I said, every other every other Saturday and Sunday is uh, you know the video game stream and then and then the stream talking with the DM. So that's like I said, I, you know, at some point, you know, maybe there'll be more. I you know more content that we're gonna try and put onto the to the stream. It really it really is gonna it's gonna depend on two things. Uh, me not burning myself out, you know, burning the candle at both ends, or uh, you know more you know the more support that I get to do this, the more I'll be able to do all of the things that I'm trying to do. Um, you know again. Uh, this is a one, this really is everything you see on this channel with players and creators, everything you see on the discord, everything you see on YouTube, everything you see on Facebook, on Twitter is me, right? I have some help, uh, from mama. Thank you so much. Um, uh, from lady poopsie is my oldest daughter. But for the most part, this is a one person operation. Everything you see happening is just me. Um, on top of that, I have a job. I have like a real job, <laughs> which is takes up a lot of my time as well. So I'm trying to balance everything and it's important to balance everything. Um, but again, the more support that I get from all of you tells me, you know, if I get a follow, if I get a subscribe, um, you, know, so, you know, get a sub here on Twitch, someone follow, you know, uh, becomes a, a patron on Patreon, someone subs on my YouTube, someone joins the Discord, that tells me, okay, I should continue doing this. I should continue moving in this fashion and trying to do a little bit better every time because people are interested. People are, you know, willing to be part of the community. People are willing to support this. So, yeah, I'm going they're gonna, they're going to give they're going to give a little bit. So, I'm going to give a little more too. Right? Um but again, if I don't see if I don't see like support, if I don't see any of that stuff, I might pull back just a little bit. Um because again, it's like you can't keep pouring energy into something that people don't want. You, you're gonna, you know, you kill yourself after a while. Um, so I'm always, I'm, I'm about balance. I'm always about balance of things. So I might pull back a little bit, you know, and say, okay, maybe I cut back on one of my streams, uh, which is the one that's not doing, which is the one that people don't seem to be interested in. All right, I'll cut back on that one. Right? I'm not there yet, you know, by by no means, but I have to start thinking about these things. I have to start um planning if those things might happen um and again that's like like you'll see you there are a million youtube videos there's a million videos out there of you know how to do this with your stream how to be you know be the best and how to get subs and how to get become an affiliate and a partner and there's like a lot of tutorials on all these things but i have not once heard somebody say don't burn yourself out either right so i'm gonna say it don't burn yourself out i'm not at a place where i am feeling burnt out or on the edge of being burnt out i'm actually like a, like a very good even keel and that's great um but at any point that i feel like that burnout's gonna happen i will absolutely start pull start pulling back a little bit because then I can't give what I need to my players. I can't give what I need to the stream. And that's not fair to anybody who is supporting us, who, who wants to see the stream do well and to see all the content that I start putting out. Right. So 
So yeah, I'm sorry, a little bit of a tangent, uh, but that's kind of what talking with the DM does. Uh, you know, we start talking about uh, certain campaigns, we start talking about this, that, and the other thing, and then we're all automatically in something in a different topic. Uh, but it's important, right? It, it's very, very important. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, You know, it's important to talk about these things uh, because it makes us feel like we're not. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I love Billy Connolly, by the way. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for that, Grant. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I really... I really think that you know a lot of these a lot of these things need to be said. Um, there's not enough people who will say it. And again, uh, I've said it in previous streams. It always also depends on what your goals are for your stream. If you're looking to make this a business, you can't do it by yourself. If you can't do it by yourself, you need to ask for help. You always need to have help. Um, and it's going to take some some sacrifice to make to make those things happen because it it's a lot of work but should, you know um you know i'm at the age where i'm like yeah it's a lot it's absolutely a lot of work but i also want it to be fun too i want it to be super fun and so yeah and so far so good right um and if i can make it fun for people that makes it fun for me too it's kind of like it's, it's just like a circle just continuously giving and giving and that's perfect that's great for me um so yeah uh that's kind of yeah that's pretty much yeah and and mama mama shady anybody who knows my my wife um you know she's definitely all about giving and enjoying um you know she's definitely she's definitely a person who will Give, a, uh, give, give very much of herself to help as many people as she can. And that's one of the things I love about her. Um, so, you know, that's, that's I, I mean, again, that's pretty much it in a nutshell as far as, uh, as far as the campaigns are concerned. Um, I guess I can say, uh, without giving too much details, that more is in the works right now. I, yeah, um, you know, uh, I really, again, I really like putting these things together. And if I could put things together for my friends, uh, and have a good time with it, I'll do that. So we do have, we do have some things in the works. Um, and that also, that also pertains to, um, some goals that I'm going to be putting up as of next week. So exclusive, you get to hear it first, you know, today. Um, we're doing a couple of things. So um, I've been trying to get folks to uh, uh, to subscribe to our YouTube page. And again, as I said earlier, the YouTube page is there to for folks who may have missed a stream um, and it's no longer on the VOD on Twitch. Uh, you'll be able to pick it up on, on YouTube. It's definitely, it's going to be a while before it gets on YouTube, but it will get on YouTube. You can catch up. Uh, but supporting you know, and subscribing to the YouTube page does eventually help support what we're trying to do with the stream. Um, so we're going to have some sub goals for YouTube. Uh, we are doing things through Patreon, right? So... Uh, if you want to support us, and we do have some amazing folks uh, who have begun to uh, support us on Patreon. Grant Wilson is one of them. Uh, Southern Twist is another. Unfortunately, he, unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he actually did message me earlier uh, to let me know. Uh, but uh, if you want to help us out with there, and the, and the, I guess the incentive for actually doing things. Uh, so, uh, subscribing through patreon uh to help us is well i'm gonna be very honest uh twitch takes a big bite out of the subs uh and 
it's a little more difficult to work with that. Uh, and Patreon, not only that, Patreon with Patreon, depending on the, the tier that you subscribe to on Patreon, you could actually get some merch from us, like exclusive merchandise. So we're going to have some sub goals for Patreon. Um, and then we're going to actually continue to have sub goals here for Twitch because sometimes it's just easier for folks and they feel like it's the best, it's the best option for them to, uh, to sub with us uh, through Twitch and that's fine. And that's great. Like I said, I want to give people, uh, options on how they can support us, but whatever option you choose shows your support. And, and again, gives, tells me which way we're going to go. Um, so what does that mean? All right. So with the Patreon goal, sub goal, when we reach 25 patrons on Patreon, we are going to have, we are going to open up the ability for you to create an MPC for our wild mount campaign all right so once we reach so the way it'll work is that when we hit 25 patreon patrons on patreon um immediately what will go out is a link to a survey and anybody can anybody can uh take the survey and through the survey it'll be basically be a questionnaire of what race do you think this NPC should be? What class do you think this NPC should be? And it just like a whole number of questions to help refine it. And that'll be out. That'll be out for a certain amount of time. And then when that time closes, uh, I will announce the results of that here. I'm talking with the DM and we will also kind of refine that NPC. Right. If there's anything that was not um, exclusively done, um, like in the questionnaire, if there's like some open things there, we, like we don't know, like what will he sound like? What will he look, you know, will he have any affectations, things like that? We'll refine that through chat here. I'm talking with the DM. So that's going to be our Patreon goal. Right. So the first 25, when we hit 25 community there's going to be community created npc you will all have the ability to make an npc for our dnd campaign and specifically the wild mount campaign um we'll have additional goals for our patreon which will be reflected for our lost mind campaign as well um but that will you won't know what that is until after we hit that 25 patron goal um for our twitch goals for our Twitch sub goals, every 100 subs, we will do a 3D print giveaway. And so what does that mean? Uh, so we'll have, and we're going to have these things in our streams. You'll see like the progress of these things. And um, so that means that every time we hit 100 subs, Right, so 100, 200, 300. Uh, we will do a giveaway in a stream of a 3D print, and it will be about three to four inches tall, depending on the mini of one of the characters from our D&D games. So yeah, that's. I think that's going to be uh, really cool. It's and it's not going to be. It's not going to be printed. It's going to be printed, but it's not going to be painted or anything like. That. Like you'll be able to paint it yourself. But it will be an absolute like a three to four inch mini of one of the characters from our D and uh, our now multiple D and D games. Right. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um. And then with our YouTube sub goal, that one I'm still I'm still trying to figure out what the goal is going to be. But right now we're at 29 subs uh, on YouTube. We're looking to get to 100 um, at the very least right now and see how see how that works. Uh, but we'll be coming up with a with a with a sub goal for that. Uh, kind of throwing around some actually exclusive YouTube uh, uh, content 
that will not be on Twitch. Um, I don't want to give away what that is. But if we hit the 100, the 100 sub mark, uh, we will be putting that out. Um, I think it's going to be a little fun. It is, it is going to be, I will say, to give you a hint, I will say it is going to be video game based. Uh, but I, I don't want to give, I don't want to give too much away. Um, as we get closer to it, I will, I will absolutely share more of what that is, but, um, it will just be content exclusive to YouTube, uh, that you will not see anywhere else. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, those are, those are the, the kind of the three exciting sub goals that we're going to be, uh, putting out into our streams next week. Um, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm really looking forward to uh, the the Patreon uh, sub goal because I really want to see what a community created NPC looks like in our campaign. I think that's going to be very fun. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying, Mama. Um, for every hundred Twitch subs, uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, and it's going to be the three, uh, 3d printed model, uh, of one of the, one of the PCs in our D and D campaigns. So, uh, so yeah, that, and so there'll be multiple ways. Again, there are going to be multiple ways to, to, to support. There's going to be multiple ways to subscribe and to help us. Um, but again, I, it's, I'm trying to think of ways, good ways that I can give back additionally um okay all right yeah okay mama's yeah mama's mama's always got the wheels turning so yeah we'll talk we'll talk after stream huh no, no worries um but yeah so you heard it here first <laughs> exclusives um and yeah again like i would i would absolutely encourage you to uh take a look at our patreon um there are some interesting uh interesting things you can get merch wise for our patreon uh with our patreon again with the patreon i think you get the most back um with your support to us uh because again depending on the tier you will get um you can get a mug you can get a t-shirt you can get a hoodie um you know there are a number of different things that you can get um, from us uh, that are exclusive. You can't get any place else. Right now, it has the players and creators logo. Um, every year, we actually change what the uh, we will be changing what the actual um, merch the 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 artwork on the merch. So every year, uh, you do have the opportunity to get new merch so it's not just after one year just like oh it's, i'm just getting the same thing over and over again no when we change it you get it again so it'll be a mug if you're doing the tier where you get a mug it'll be a mug with the new artwork on it uh it'll be a t-shirt with the new artwork on it or the hoodie you know so so get you know take a look take a look at the patreon stuff um and you know see see what floats your boat Again, you do, we actually and we actually priced the Patreon tiers less expensive than the Twitch tiers um, because we could do that, and we want it with again we we want we want you to be able to have options, you know, because not all the the options available just on Twitch are not for everybody, and they're not a lot of people aren't able to do anything but follow, which is great. Uh, but if you want to support and do a little more and it's not, you know, Twitch is not doing it for you. Check out our Patreon. You know, there's some really cool perks for there. Um, so, yeah. And I think I said, I said, I think I said it a couple of times already. Thanks to Grant Wilson, who is in chat and Southern Twist, who are our, our two new patrons in Patreon. Um, I believe within the next few months, um, we will be actually able to start putting our D and D, uh, pod, uh, D and D campaigns into podcast form. 
Um, I'm still I'm still trying to put that together. I'm still trying to uh, figure out. I, you know, I've done a podcast before, so a lot of the technical stuff I already know how to do. I have a lot of the equipment and programs I need. Um, but I think we can do that in the next couple of months. So uh, look for that announcement at some point when we officially get that together. Because um, that's going to be a lot of fun, too. I enjoy it. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed doing the podcast when I did it. Uh, it was a lot of work. But let me tell you something. between you and me um yeah um i will say this the difference between streaming and podcasts obviously one is audio one is visual um but for me as the person who edited all of the podcasts i love streaming because i don't have to edit a damn thing Man, when I did the podcast, there was not an um or an ah or a uh or any of those things. I edited all of those things out and I sounded amazing. My partner sounded amazing, right? But when you talk to when you talk to us face to face, you know, everybody has inflections. Everybody has certain things, and sometimes there's major pauses. I was really—I got really good at editing those podcasts, and you couldn't even tell when there was an um or an ah or any of those things. I did save all of the ums and ahs into its own file because I did—I had planned on putting together a weird track where it sounded like a song like it would be like um 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 you know something something along those lines uh but i that's i love streaming because i don't have to do that anymore <laughs> it's so good yeah smash cut of the campaign highlights yeah <laughs> just all of the pauses yeah <laughs> that would be great that would be great hey look grant don't get me wrong and everybody else don't get me wrong i am so like every time i uh, we do every time we do a stream every time we do something like i even have a hard time clipping the stuff in, in twitch because i don't have time anymore right i i'm so like I, I've been trying to do my best, but I am terrible at it because I don't have the time. And then exactly what you're talking about, Grant. Like I, I want to make all of these like m mini videos that I can throw up on YouTube of highlights and and things like that that are just like hilarious or whatever. And I just, I just, it, it takes time that I don't have, and it sucks. Um. <laughs> but no trust me yeah that that would be hilarious I've, I've had some ideas you know, in that in that area uh at some point if if i have the time and ability to do it i will probably do something like that but i can't i can't promise it i can't guarantee it at this point uh because right now I'm, I'm i'm doing just all of the things that i'm currently doing is exactly the amount of time i have to do them if I try to to do any more, I will probably start burning myself out, and I, I, I don't want to do that. So, while I am excited to want to do all of these things, I just I just can't at the moment. And I wish I could clone myself and be like, "Hey, me, go take care of that." Think, like, all right, um, but I don't have that. So, ah. <sighs> So, yep. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, I need, I need, I need three Chris's like, uh, like Pumat there. Oh man. So, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, 
you know, I, I, I hope I hope that I was able to kind of share a little bit of background, a little of information on the process of, of how these campaigns came about. Um, you know, it's like I said, it's it's really interesting. You just you, you got to want to do something and then you want to make sure that you ask every single person, you know, if they want to do it with you. It's really what it comes down to. I, and I, I hope... I hope that you do that. Like, if, if you've decided that you've wanted to run a game. Or, or you know... And again, any type of game. I'm not just talking, you know, D&D. Tabletop game. A board game. A video game online. Um, just reach out to people. Just say, hey. Do you want to play this game with me? Do you want, you know... Do you, do you play this game? Are you interested in playing this game? And get answers. You know, you never know unless you try. I mean, that's... You can say that about everything. Um, so, oh, I, I think I missed something that you said, Grant. Do you think you would do something like this stream with the players or keep it behind the screen? I Well, that's what I was saying earlier. I think, I think I'll probably... I'd like to do this. Uh, I'd like to do this with some of my players, um, in addition to, um, in addition to other people who I just find to be amazingly talented, um, and, and I w I want to share them with all of you, right? Uh, but again, it's like I don't want to. I'm not going to force this on any of my players, like. Gene and Julia have already volunteered for tribute, so that they're probably going to be the first ones. Uh, but if any of my any of my players wanted to do something like this, where I would just kind of sit with them and talk with them, and ask them questions, or and you get to ask them questions, yeah, I would love to do that. Absolutely, that's that's on that's been on my radar for a while, ever since I used to do that with the podcast. Um, but uh, but again, yeah. I just, I just don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know if some of them may not want to do it, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. No pressure. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if I can do that, like, I would love to. And so, like I said, I, I get, I get a little tired of sounding my own voice, um, which is probably why I do all the voices, because then I make them sound different. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope, I hope, um, I hope if you're watching this, that you do, uh, feel inspired to not only do something with your friends, uh, do something with your family, uh, but just have a damn good time with it and don't be afraid to kind of put yourself out there and, and ask and talk to them because, Again, I mean, if, if you're if you're a person uh, who is going through this quarantine that we're all in, that most of us are in, and you're saying to yourself, I'm going to go stir crazy if I don't do something, then don't don't wait, like figure it out, find find a way to do it. You know, there are, there's, there's, mul there's a multitude of ways to do these things. Um, you know, the only limitation right now is, is yourself. If you're not, if you're not trying to move forward with it. Uh, and yeah, you might have some obstacles and you might not have certain things that you think are keeping you from doing this, but try and figure out ways around those obstacles try and figure out the things you need try to figure out how to get them but if if people are your only obstacle right now just keep asking find people uh i always say if your friends and family aren't willing to do these things go out into into new communities go out and find your local gaming store find out where they are online like see if they they have like a forum or you know a way for you to connect with folks uh, in your area to play games. I know a lot of local gaming stores are doing that currently. Get involved that way, right? 
there's there's so many different ways to do these things that you really shouldn't feel trapped in, in a sense that you can't do it or you don't have the ability to do it there are ways around it um you know even even if you even if you just like use a phone right there there are ways to do these things to connect with people A lot of my family, I want to say like a lot of my family, like not my immediate family, but, um, you know, family on both sides, you know, mother and father side of the family, they don't get what I do at all. Um, they're very, very confused by many of the things that I do. They're uh, unsure, uh, why I do them makes me a little weird, like makes me a little odd. That's fine. That's fine. It's not their it's not what the, it's not their bag it's not what they are interested in it's not what they understand um but it is what it is um yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah parents can be very confused by the things that their children do um and, and it is funny it is funny but uh i would because i found this I found this on my hard drive uh, when I was going. I was going through a bunch of stuff. Absolutely, there's also there's also a power to found family and those that support us in our hobbies. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, found family. Um, that is, I mean, obviously those those are the people who know you the best. Um, <laughs> that's great grant that's great um yeah found family those are the folks that know you the best um those are the, those are the folks that you can count on a lot of times and and again yeah i i don't believe so much like family is great um but family can mean a lot of different things it doesn't just mean blood um, for some people that's, that's not that important because some families are toxic, right? Um, and so sometimes and found families are usually, again, made up of the people who understand the, the, you understand each other. Um, you are similar in a lot of ways and those can be the strongest bonds in your life. Um. So it's very, very, these things are very important. Um, so I do, it's going to be a little embarrassing, but I'd rather get it out in the open now. Um, let's see. Uh, so I do want to show a picture because we did talk about uh, live action role play. And uh, LARPing can be fun uh, and it can not be interesting. Uh, uh, yesterday when I was playing um, Old Man Plays Old Games, I was playing uh, Borderlands 2. Uh, more specifically, the DLC uh, Assault on Dragon Keep, which is the Tiny Tina D DLC, and it is it is a meta it's a meta DLC where they where they are playing a version of Dungeons and Dragons called Bunkers and Badasses, and within the dlc they are making pop culture references to different types of gaming right so there's a lot of um they're making fun of world of warcraft players they're making fun of game of thrones they're making fun of uh you know all these different things dungeons and dragons yeah, as i said um and one of the things that was interesting that i completely forgot about is you actually find a grenade in the game that is not necessarily a grenade it actually gives you the, the ability to cast lightning bolt uh and your character whatever character you're you're playing actually does say lightning bolt lightning bolt which is a direct reference to this old video of of a live action role play game where somebody was actually it's it's the lightning bolt video you can find it on google um and it did not cast LARPers in the best light. 
And I'm not going to lie, it, it still to me to this day is kind of funny. Uh, but that's when, whenever, t every time you talk about live action role playing or LARPing, um, there are some people who will immediately, like, that's the thing they remember, right? Is the lightning bolt video. Uh, role models was great, but also, also, also tended to paint people almost like a little bit, like only weirdos play LARP. Um, and don't get me wrong. I love the hell at, at, of that game. Uh, of that movie role models is great um but so i i figured i'm talking about live action role playing i'm talking about larping i might as well show you what i looked like as one of my characters um just get it over with uh so this is one of uh, i'm about to show you a picture of my very first uh live action role play character and I was very much into like I'm very much into uh, like costuming makeup um, prosthetics uh, things like that I, over the years I've gotten you know fairly okay with with these things this was my very first character uh, go easy on me um, yeah so that is uh, my very first character, um, War Preacher, uh, and for those who don't know, uh, I am also a leather worker, and so that is that is a combination of makeup and a facial prosthetic, and um, the facial prosthetic actually uh, stopped here like around my mouth and actually came down like around this. Um, so all of this here, like I grew up what, what you see kind of right now, I grew all of that, my, my, my mustache, my goatee and put makeup in there. But the rest from, from, you know, top of my forehead all the way around is a facial prosthetic. <laughs> Don't, don't you put me and that cat's movie in the same sentence. How dare you, sir? How dare you? <laughs> so, um, as I was saying, I am also a leather worker. Um, and so the armor that you see me wearing is actual real leather armor. Um, I made the gauntlets. Um, those are 100% those are me. Uh, but the actual shoulder pieces and the the cur the curus is I helped create I helped make it, but I didn't create it. Um, at the time, I was an apprentice leather worker, and so we went to the game the game that we played where I played this character. I would wear the armor kind of as an advertisement to the other players that hey, you want some leather work? You know you can you know you can you can get it from us. Um, but that is all re real leather armor, um, that, that was created. And I, I actually can make things like that now. Currently, this is almost 20 years ago. Um, yeah, I, uh, Julia, uh, I don't know if you've learned this about me yet, but I feel you're going to, you, I feel you're going to figure it out pretty soon. I don't go halfway on things. Um, <laughs> So, so I tend to be very, uh, you know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to, I'm going to do it a hundred percent or not at all. Um, and I go full bore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so when folks think about the lightning bolt video and think of the, you know, or the rolled models, um, I like to show this picture, um, because then I say, well, this is the other side of it. Right? You have people who really get into it. You have people who really enjoy it. It doesn't make them weirdos, but look how awesome it could be. Right? Um, and like I said, like, you know, for me, it was like, it took me a while to put, to put this stuff together. I mean, you can And again, it's not 100%. It's not like the whole package. It's not 100% like the best. 
I mean, I'm wearing combat boots in this picture. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not the greatest, but uh, I, I worked with what I had. And again, I was an apprentice leather worker at the time. So I was able, I had the ability ability to have these, le you know, the, the leather uh, in the armor and everything. Um, and then I found the prosthetic. I purchased the prosthetic, uh, painted it, you know, put it together. Uh, I also, you, you can pro, I don't know if you can see, but I also do have fangs. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do have fang, my fangs in. Um, the fangs were, um, I'm trying to remember, uh, vamp fangs, because uh, they did exist at that time too. Uh, so van, if you go to vampfangs.com, again, they are not, Nobody, nobody sponsors any of my stuff. So when I talk about something, it's because I actually use them and they're pretty damn good. So vampfangs.com, you can actually get these fake plastic fangs. Uh, you can actually mold them to your teeth and actually they fit very well in there. Um, and that's what I used. And so it was just like, a, you just put a little bit of things together. Uh, and over time, uh, the character did, uh, you know, I did add things to my costume. I was able to purchase other things and it, it did, you know, kind of fill it out. But, uh, but yeah, so that was my LARP character, uh, my very first LARP character. And, uh, my other LARP characters kind of progressed from there into, you know, different things. Uh, but I, I you know, I, it's fun. Now, granted, it's not for me anymore. Like LARP, LARPing is not is not for me anymore for various reasons. I'm not gonna get into it, uh, but I just I, the the biggest reason I think for me is like I just I'm I'm at an age where I'm I'm kind of done with it. That might change, that might change down the line, um, but it's not for me anymore. But I still encourage people to do it. I still think it's fun. I think people will have a good time with it, and um. But I like to show the flip side. I like to show that, you know, because people from all walks of life can play, can play this game, can play, you know, go to a LARP and be these characters, have a great time. Same thing with tabletop, any type of game. Uh, we should not be shaming each other for the things that we love and the things that we are passionate about. Um, I currently have a closet full of LARP costuming. Um, you know, and that is, and at one point I had more costuming than I had regular clothes, right? Because that's what I was passionate about. That's what I love doing. Um, doesn't, doesn't make me wrong. What it's when you get into that, uh, weird fuzzy place, um, where it becomes more important than real life that you probably want to start questioning uh what you're doing or or it's okay if other people are questioning what you're doing but if you're able to you know live your life and then once a week you know once a month you go out and you do uh you do this game and you go out for a whole weekend and you have a great time and you come back and you're not hurting anybody awesome like do that keep doing it um but yeah i just i thought i'd just share that with everybody um i'm not gonna lie i'm also i'm also super proud of that costume even to this day like I, I, it's one of the best costume pieces that i put together um and, and so I, just, I definitely didn't want to share it and it's out there like it's i've actually seen it it's interesting uh, over the years, I've actually seen it as part of, uh, people have used it as part of memes, um, which was crazy. Uh, but, you know, every now and then I see it on, on online and I'm just like, oh, okay. Um, but I did find it, I did find it going through a bunch of folders in my, in my computer through some of my old LARP photos. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I hope you, I hope you all got a kick out of that. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, we're coming, we're pretty much coming down to it at this point. Um, you know, I, I this was great. This is every time I do talking with a DM, it's, uh, 
I always have a blast. Uh, I love talking with all of you in chat and you know answering what questions I can and sharing things with everybody. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I do hope that you uh, you definitely come back again for future talking with the DMs. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, please uh, you know go to our YouTube page and subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, every subscribe helps. Um, <laughs> at least we know a Tabaxi or a Rakshasa will be screen accurate. Yeah, it can be done. It can be done. Just uh, depends on who does it. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you get the chance, please go to our YouTube page and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. We very really would help. Um, if you haven't followed the pay, followed us here, please follow us on Twitch. Uh, really, really, really would appreciate that. Um, and so yeah, so next talking with the DM is is not going to be next week. It'll be the week after. Uh, same time channel um and yeah i really hope that uh i really enjoy talking with you all i really enjoy sharing with you um and i really hope to see you all in some of our other streams uh, you know we have a great time we want you to be part of that so please join us uh so uh with that uh i will say please uh as we close out i'm going to um we're going to uh, uh, we're going to raid a friend of the stream and take a look real quick to see who we have. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to raid. Ah, I'm going to raid Peaches. All right. So, um, yeah. So if you get the chance um you know show show some love to peaches we're going to raid her right now she's playing by Bio, bioshock infinite um and i will say that uh please be good to yourselves be good to others take care of others and remember to please take care of yourselves until next time we'll see you then <laughs>